listening to the GM Shuffle with Michael Lombardi, presented by DraftKings and VSIN. Here is Femi Abebefe. Welcome to another edition of the GM Shuffle with Michael Lombardi, presented by DraftKings and VSIN. I'm your host, Femi Abebefe. As always, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you get your podcasts. Our producer, Elliot Bowman, with us on the ones and twos. And Michael, feels like deja vu. Once again, we sat here doing this pod last year. Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl against the Philadelphia Eagles. Here we are. In 2024, the Chiefs beat the 49ers 25-22 in overtime, second overtime in Super Bowl history as the Chiefs repeat as champions. That was a great game, though, right? I mean, was, I mean you can't complain about the the game, the the flow, the back and forth, the the intrigue, the strategy, the tactics, all that. It was a great game. And, and so, look, you know, it comes down to five or six plays every game. And, you know, the Chiefs did, made theirs and San Francisco didn't. But... I think this is a reflection time for San Francisco. You know, everybody's calling for Kyle Shanahan's head and all that, which is stupid mm. and ridiculous. But I, I think the game had some really key moments in it that I think you have to kind of take back if you're Kyle and say to yourself, okay, how do I, how do we get over the hump? We've got a really good team. We're a really great regular season team. This was the best they played in the playoffs, and they lost. They played crappy in the first two games and won. Yep. So, like, what do we have to do to get over the hump? And I think that's kind of how they diagnose why we lost or why we won is going to be the key to their offseason. What do you think was the purpose of why they won? Because at no point watching the game, I was texting back and forth with my brother, but at no point did I think that the Niners were going to win. I always felt comfortable, like, like I think Kansas City is going to win just because early on in that game, the Niners were dominating. You look at the box score just from the eye test, and then the score was still 3 nothing. It's like they got to take advantage of this, well, and they, they never did. Well, I think the key to the game was they were horrible on third down. They're 3 for 12 on third down. So, you know, you got into – we talked about it all week, whether it was, you know, when we had Chuck Pagano on the show, we had, you know, every football person with Baldy, every football mm-hmm. person we had is, look, if you get into a long down situation against Magnola – and you're going to have trouble if you don't handle the pressure or don't, you know. And what have I said for a long time about this offense? I think this offense is tremendous. But when it gets into a drop back pass game, it's not the same offense. And so for me, I think the thing that what I would say for Kyle, the, the number one thing is we've got to do a better job of handling blitz zero. Because when you go through the game, the third and four before the, the Moody field goal to make it 19 to 16. Mm-hmm. That third and four, everybody in the building, it's two-minute warning, everybody knows Kyle's coming after them. They convert that play there, right? The game's pretty much over. Yep. You kick the field goal, you walk off, you win. You don't have an answer for it. Then you get it in overtime, and you've got another third and four, and they go blitz zero, and you make – now, I don't know if they had it blocked or they missed the call, but they don't block it. Next thing – Jennings is wide open in the end zone, and they can't throw it. they got to settle for a field goal. So, to me, handling blitz zero – and it goes back to what Brady talked about on his show, Tom Brady's, with Jim Gray. He was talking to Steve Young about coming out to the line of scrimmage, knowing the look you're going to get, making sure why would you run that play when you know that doesn't help, help you against what they've called. And I, and I think that's got to be something at San Francisco. And I think Purdy, who I don't – I mean, I'm looking up at the screens. I've never been in here before. Well, I've been in here before, but we've got geniuses on the screen talking about, uh, you know, is Purdy – is he the answer? Like, what more does Purdy have to do, right? And Purdy's going to get better because I think what, yeah. what now – Kyle can start doing things at the line of scrimmage with Purdy that he probably couldn't do – or I know he couldn't do it with Garoppolo, you know, and so – and he definitely couldn't do it with Lance and he definitely couldn't do it with the other guys he had. That, to me, is where I think he's got to take his offense to another level. Kubiak's going to go to New Orleans. He's going to hire new people to come in. And I think, to me, if Kyle's, you know, I'm not saying get away from what he does, but Mm -hmm. add to the element of what they do. Yeah, build on what they've been doing because yeah, that's the, kind of what's lacking. I thought Purdy was really good in the game. Like I think anybody watching the game objectively, in fact, early on in the game, it felt like both teams were a little bit jittery. Purdy felt like the most calm guy on the field. I mean, like McCaffrey has the fumble on the first. The opening drive was spectacular, and then all of a sudden McCaffrey fumbles in the red zone, and then the Chiefs like Pacheco's fumbling. Like, I got, I thought Purdy was composed, and like the, the moment was not too big. Which was a narrative going into this game is how is Purdy going to handle this oh, and a, all that a stuff. Ridiculous it's like, like the guy was. I thought he was pretty good in the game. It was a ridiculous narrative, but it was, you know, that's Purdy can't do any good, you know? Yeah. Like, it's, like, hilarious. He couldn't do anything well 
according to that, I think he played really good. I don't think that's – to me, that's not San Francisco's issue. No. The second thing, if I'm on this airplane and I'm John Lynch talking to Kyle, we got to have a really serious conversation about defensive football. Because what, what happened in that game is – and we said this on the pod and we've talked about it – is as good as they are on the defensive front, as good as Seattle was in 14 in their front, mm-hmm. as good as Atlanta was playing – in 16 in their front. These games go long. These games are hot. They're humid. They wear on you. And so why would we be surprised at the last four drives of the Chiefs that they had in the game? The last four drives the Chiefs had went touchdown, field goal, field goal, touchdown. The last three drives that the the 49ers had went touchdown, field goal, field goal. Like everybody gets tired at the end of the game. And Mm -hmm. so the offenses expand. And so what you were watching on TV yesterday is a team like San Francisco who is very good at playing their zone coverages, whether it's two, whether it's three, whatever they do. But when they can't get pressure from the front four, which happened in the fourth quarter of this game, which happened in the fourth quarter of the last Super Bowl loss, then they're in problems. They have issues because they can't. Think of this in baseball, right? If you throw nothing but fastballs, somebody will hit you in the seventh and eighth inning. If you have to have three pitches to be a great pitcher, you got to have a fastball curve and a changeup, or you got to have a fastball slider and a, you know, whatever. You got to have three pitches. San Francisco defensively has never had three pitches, and great defenses have three pitches. They can play man, they can play zone, and they can play man zone. And when your defense foundation is based off of zone, because you have this great defensive front, which is tremendous. Yeah. It's tremendous. Don't get me wrong. And if the front tires out, all of a sudden you're not very good. It's like last year at Philadelphia. 60 of their 70 sacks come from their front, right? And then when they got tired, what happened? Kansas City comes from behind, mm-hmm. right? And this, to me, is the conversation that John Lynch, as the builder, as Kyle's builder, right? Kyle, he works for Kyle. As his builder, that's where his mindset has to go. Look, I love Steve Wilkes, but we've got to design. We've got to sit in here in the month of March, and we've got to figure out, we've got to change the defensive game plan because we can rely on our front during the regular season, but when we get to these other games, whether it's Detroit, Green Bay, or, San, or uh, Kansas, City. Kansas City, we got to have three pitches. Yeah. And if you don't practice three pitches during the season, you just can't all of a sudden, two weeks before the game, get into three pitches. Yeah, which, which was the tough part about when we're breaking the game down for two weeks, saying, hey, we want Steve Wilkes to be divergent in thought, but he can't change everything that they do because this is kind of who they've been. You're not going to just all of a sudden, hey, for this one game, let's put a bunch of new stuff in there because then that's kind of confusion can happen. Yeah, which he did. He tried to, he changed things up. He got in the five-man front to start the game off. They stopped the run. Mm-hmm. They were getting three and outs. I mean, look, you know, Kansas City goes punt, punt, fumble, punt, field goal, interception, punt, field goal, punt. I mean, he had it going. The yeah. problem was San Francisco couldn't convert third downs because they got into third and longs. What are their average third and nine in most situations, yeah. right? They couldn't convert those. I thought they would spread him out more offensively, but they didn't. I thought McCaffrey would have a huge day catching. He did. I don't know where Kittle is. He, you know, yeah. I got to watch the All-22 today to find out what happened to Kittle or what they were doing to Kittle because God knows we're not getting that look on television. It's tragic, isn't it? It is. <laughs> like, it's tragic. Like, what are we doing? I mean, how many more times are we going to show Taylor Swift, but we can't show why Kittle isn't getting the ball? Look, I love Taylor Swift for the game. I think it's tremendous. She's done everything to help promote the brand. But when we're on the game, we got to figure out what's going on in the game. Mm-hmm. This is where I have a biggest issue. Like the job of the of the of the guy doing the game, the, the analyst, that's mm-hmm. the word we use, analyst. He should not tell us what just happened. He should tell us what's going to happen based on the overall perspective of the game. Here's what's going on. And the longer you're watching that game, as I was watching it with my two sons, the longer you know that the defensive front's getting tired and they're not getting there. And Mahomes is Mariano Rivera. He's going to close the game out if he has the time. And there was, and he got by the third quarter, he got comfortable that nobody was really going to hit him. Yep. Yeah, and I thought the Niners, that rush, they did an awesome job. They talked about it on the broadcast a little bit, like when they were rushing and containing him in the pocket, not letting him break contain, because that's what kind of what Mahomes wants to do, get outside and do his thing there. And they did a really good job of kind of just keeping him contained in that one. On the Kittle note, though, targeted only three times in the game. This is an all first-team all-pro tight end and was pretty much a ghost 
for a majority of the football game, only two catches for four yards. That is something that when you're watching the game, it's just like, what's like, what's going on here? Why can't they get the football to one of their best players? I also thought McCaffrey in the third quarter, they didn't get the football to no, him enough. Stopped, to where, it's it's like, again, like, what's going on there? It's like the guy, See, is, he, he was their best offensive player. I think McCaffrey's great, but I think McCaffrey's a luxury item. I, I, I think McCaffrey is great. But I think McCaffrey is like Andrew Tony when he was for the 76ers. You bring his ass off the bench, and all of a sudden, or, or who's that guy for the Pistons? Remember that? Vinny Johnson, the Vinnie microwave? Jo- the microwave. To yep. me, he's the microwave. You get him in there, and all of a sudden, you know, whereas if you had another back, if you had Mosert to go with him, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not, and I think McCaffrey's incredible. He, t- he takes you from a very good offense to a great offense. But when he's your lead dog, then he wears down. Mm. Right. He's he, he's going to wear down. You need a little bit of a change of pace in there. Again, this is kind of where you got to get to. I mean, he had eight targets. He caught eight passes for 80 yards, average 10 yards a catch. But, you know, when you look at the sheet, Ayuk's got three catches for, for 49 yards. You got you got Samuels got 11 targets with three catches. That, that can't that's, happen. That's bad. That can't happen. Right. Yeah. And, and, and Kittle's got three targets for two catches for four yards. Like, that can't happen. You, you can't go to the game and come flying back on the plane to San Francisco and look at the stat sheet and say, God damn it. You know, I mean, McLeod got fucking – he had one catch for thir- – you know, he had more than him. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I got to watch the tape to really get down to the bottom of it. But to me, that's where you, you don't want to walk off the field. Look, what Rice said, we said they're going to go down with Pacheco, Rice, and Kelsey. That's what they did. Mahomes mm-hmm. is their leading rusher. Yeah, I mean Mahomes. He was sixty-six yeah. yards on those. A lot of those scrambles and the big. That, when we come back run. from the break, we got to talk about got to have it plays right mm-hmm. and the overtime and the deferment of all that stuff. Yeah, I do want to ask you about that. But but to me, you know, I think to me as a play caller, you got to really understand that. And and Mahomes is too, when the game's on the line, Mahomes getting the ball. Yep. Yeah, but Patrick Mahomes able to lead the game-winning drive there. Now, a third Super Bowl. We'll get into what this means for Mahomes, his legacy. I mean, the resume that he's stacking up has been phenomenal in the six years as a starter. Andy Reid, his legacy as well as a head coach here, now a third Super Bowl championship. And we'll, of course, talk about the deferment in overtime with the new overtime rules. We'll discuss it after the break here on the GM Show. You're listening to the GM Shuffle with Michael Lombardi, presented by DraftKings and VSIN. Here is Femi Abebefe. Okay, we will get to the Kansas City side of things here because, once again, now the Chiefs seem to be the dynasty of the 2020s, the third Super Bowl in five years. But wanted to continue our discussion on the 49ers because for that team, it's hard to walk away for them and not think, man, we really let one get away there. And they had ample opportunities to kind of put this game away and, and ultimately win their first Super Bowl in a long time. Well, you, rem- you remember in the Ram game where I know Belichick missed that game. I know he wasn't there. He, they had a substitute teacher. They had one of those guys that was the imposter that was there at the game that yep. pretended who he was. You know, remember, and then he walks over to Brendan Daly and he walks over to Brian Flores and he says, look, there's about 10 plays left to go in the game. Let's make sure everybody knows what we're doing. Let's make sure we cover every scenario and let's go. Well, that, that, that is what hit me with 546 to go in the game, mm-hmm. where if you're Kyle Shanahan, you know you know that you don't want to punt the ball back to them. You know, and, I, and I'm saying it out loud to my sons, my sons are saying it, you know, that, look, we need two more first downs. Andy blows that time out early in the quarter, which to me was a little bit reminiscent of what Sean McVay did in his game against the Lions, which mm-hmm. cost him ultimately the game. And so you got it now. You got a great opportunity. So you got a second and five at the at the Kansas City thirty-five, right? Yep. And, and they're doing a great job of moving the ball. They come out. They get twenty-three yards to to Jennings. They start out. They get off tackle for nine. They got a second and one. McCaffrey goes for three. Got a first and ten. They get five. Now they're in second and five, right? Mm-hmm. And at, at that point, before the two-minute warning, and they had it. They were they could they had to run a play before the two-minute warning. There's a run call there because if you throw an incomplete pass there, you, you know, now it goes to the two. It, you can't get it to the two minute warning, right? He threw it for no gain, so the ball stayed. But you want to, th- you need to run the ball there. He got, he benefited from it. But now if he runs it, your best run, you got to have your best run there, right? What's our best run? What do we think we can go? Because you know now 
that Spagnola on most all second downs if you go through the game, and I didn't chart it, but he was really heavy dose. He saw this as a second down game. And so a lot of the blitz zero stuff, a lot of him attacking was on second down. He wanted to create a third and long because he knew they couldn't hold up on in, in third and long. He kind of knew it. And so he was better at third and long with base per, with with his normal scheme without having to overload pressures than he was in second and five or second. He wanted to kind of create negative plays, which he always does. Yep. And so they throw it. Now it's third and five, right? Now it's third and five. You got the two-minute warning. You know it's blitz zero. Yep. You know it's blitz zero. You know he's coming after you. That first down there is going to win the game for you because Andy's got to start using his yep. timeouts. He's got to call the second timeout. You get, and you can't even get the ball past the line of scrimmage because because McDuffie comes clean off the slot. You don't have an answer whether it was the protection wasn't routed that way or rerouted. I don't know. But to me, that's one of those where Kyle's going to stay up that night saying – that was the wrong call at the wrong time. That that there is gave Kansas City everything they needed to do. It was a great blitz call by Spagnola. It was a horrible answer. Blitz zero, if you're going to write down this game, this game was about the two blitz zero calls, and this one was significant, and this one killed them. Yeah, and Steve Spagnola now becomes the first offensive or defensive coordinator to now win four Super Bowls. I mean, he's going to go down as one of the greatest, if not the greatest, defensive coordinator just of what he's done in these big games. But – I, I always think back to this because everybody in the building knows he's about to dial it up. He goes down swinging. Like if you but, go back and listen to it, like how how is there not he's an attacking answer to that? Because people because they don't explain it to you on television. He's attacking the protections. He's not just blitzing. He's not. Yeah, gotcha. it, it's laser blitzes. It's he wants to get the guy free, and mm -hmm. the quarterback as if, if Brady would have been the quarterback, he would have rerouted the protection. He would have blocked it. Think about this. Uh, this is what got Bob Sutton fired uh, in. Uh, in against KC, yeah. against KC, they had a third and ten. Yeah, you know, he tried to play two man. They hit Edelman. Then they get, then they got a Gronk. They extend Gronk, hit mm -hmm. a slant. Then they hit a fade to Gronk. Like they had an answer in New England for everything that Sutton wanted to run. New England would have had an answer with with their system. Forget the last couple of years, but if McDaniel's and their system were there, they would have had an answer for this because they put so much on the quarterback. Right. They mm -hmm. want the quarterback to make the call. They want to the reroute the protection. Again, it goes back to what Brady was talking about with Steve Young. This is not the case. They kind of come out. They want to run their stuff and then they run it and they hope it happens. And, and I think to me, this is one of those where now we've lost two Super Bowls. We've had a big lead. We've lost two Super Bowls in the fourth quarter. It doesn't mean Kyle's a bad coach at all. It means mm -hmm. Kyle's a really good coach because it takes a lot to get to this yeah, level. Exactly. Right. It's just how do we fix this? How do we make slight adjustments to fix what we have to do? And it's the little things when you're going up against the quarterback well, of the likes of Mahomes and, and what they're able to do. Well, this game was clearly, I mean, if you want to label this game anything, this game was exactly what I talk about. The secret to all victory lies in the organization of the non-obvious, right? Mm. And so this game was about the non-obvious. This game was, do we have an answer for Blitz Zero? This game was about what was our best second down calls. They're non-obvious, right? We're having a hard time converting third down because we're in trouble on second down. You know, and so those things start to add up. And then, of course, when you get to do we defer or not to defer? Yeah, what's your take on that? Well, I mean, look, here's a couple of ways to think about it. Let, let's start with the idea that the Chiefs prepare for it, okay? Which, when you bring rookies to training camp, you have to go over the rules of pro football, okay? Mm -hmm. Because rookies typically don't even know that they can get up and run with it after they fall down. So you spend your rookie symposium going over the transition from college to pro. With the new overtime rules, you have to spend time on the overtime rules, especially in this game, because they matter. People are saying, well, you know, they're, you know, there was, I mean, Romo didn't know the rules. He didn't know them. No. He did not know them. Nance did. He didn't. And so, you know, to me, that's an issue. But this is the difference between strategy and tactics, Okay. That when you have a strategy or when you have a strategy on how you want to play the game, so all the chief players came out and said, we spent time talking about the new rules. Mm -hmm. We spent time talking about what we would do. We wanted to defer, that's, we, and we would have gone for two. Yep. Okay. All right. So now that's the strategy. Okay. The tactics are, if you're going for two, you got to have a lot of two-point plays in your arsenal. Like, to me, I, I don't know this for a fact, but the Hardeman touchdown was a, probably a two-point play. Mm -hmm. 
and you practice those two-point plays because the strategy is dictating that in case this happens, we have to, right? You know, there's a great scene. There was a great movie back in the early 80s called Body Heat, and Mickey, Mickey, uh, Mickey Rourke, that kind of, the, you know, was in The Wrestler, kind of, a, he's in it, he's in a bit part with William Hurt, and he's trying to, William Hurt's trying to kill this, the wife of, the husband of this wife that he's in love with, and so he tells him a great line. He says, you know, there's 50 ways to fuck up a murder. And if you can think of 25 of them, you're a genius and you ain't no genius, right? And so there's, there's certain things that you have to do in terms of as it applies from strategy to tactics. And so Andy being the experienced coach that he is said, okay, if we ever get to overtime, we're gonna need two point plays. Belichick, we played Atlanta. We thought we we're gonna need two point plays to extend the lead. We ended up needing two point plays to get in the lead, but we had a Thursday and a Friday period to practice two-point plays, and he made sure that McDaniels had enough two-point plays on his sheet. Mm -hmm. Andy had enough two-point plays on his sheet, whereas San Francisco, their players said, we didn't really know, we didn't go over it, okay? But to me, the difference between what you do in, in overtime really comes down to, if you defer and you know you get the ball again, then you're always in a four-down game. Yep. If you take the ball, you're in a three down game and I'd rather be in a four down game. Right. And so mm -hmm. Andy, knowing that he was in a four down game, he just decided he, everything was all on his two point play. Like the Mahomes scramble, we talk about got to have it place, right? Mm -hmm. The Mahomes run in overtime where it's fourth and inches. Like, and Bosa follows Pacheco down the line, right? Like for me, and I said it at the time, if I were the defense coordinator of the 49ers, I would have had Bosa run up the field to go get Mahomes. Because as, when they broke the huddle, I said to Mick and Matt, sprint right option? Because mm -hmm. they were in shotgun on fourth and one. It's like, it, well, he, was, he tried to run it on third down. There was no way he was coming back with a run. Mm -hmm. There was no way he was coming back with a run. So you knew he was going to throw it. He got in a sprint right option formation. The back was offset to that side, which made me think, okay, but – Bosa, to me, would have been up the field. Again, the secret to all victory lies in the organization and not obvious. You've got to have a play. You know what Andy wants to run. You've got to do that. Now, this is a lot of second guessing going on, but if you were with me watching the game and with Mick, you, we were saying that at the time. Like it's, It really wasn't spent right option. Mm -hmm. He took off and ran with it, but you had to stop him. He was the guy going to get the ball. Yeah. And so I, I think there lies the issue because they were playing a four-down game, whereas Kyle – Got a huge break with the McDuffie pass, the defensive holding call on third down. Huge break. It was a great call. Mm -hmm. It was the right call. They got a huge break on the first down where it, Bolton almost had a chance to intercept the football. Right. Well, I thought Debo should have caught that ball. He should have, yeah. I mean, I don't think that was a break. I think Debo should have caught that. I I think to me, with, I, God bless you, Femi. I Thank think you. Debo, see, what people don't understand about the Super Bowl, too, the half times are so long with Usher and all that going on to get the stage out there that you can go in at halftime and get, and get IVs. I don't know if Debo got one. Maybe he just got exhausted, mm -hmm. you know, because it's hard for me to understand how you could pull a hamstring this late in the season. But that's the difference. So it, when you have a strategy, as you're a coach, and you say, this is how I want to play the game, you got to have tactics to support the strategy. So what's good saying we're going to go for it on four? We're going to, so Kansas City's players were saying, if we would have scored last and we would have tied the game, we would have gone for two and the game would have come down. They yeah. come, and they had enough plays to do it. You know what killed San Francisco? What? What killed San Francisco was the Moody miss extra point. And here's mm -hmm. why. Not because he missed it. The, game's, the game would have been 20 to 16. Now, Romo's screaming for him to go for it on fourth down when it was 19 to 16, which I have no idea why. Okay? You knew Andy was going to kick there, mm -hmm. right? But if it's 20 to 16, the game comes down to that play. They have to go for it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's the difference in the game there. Now, maybe Kansas City is a little bit more aggressive, like we said, once again, like needing four downs to convert 10 yards. But it at least puts it in a high leverage spot of if they don't get that. Comes now down you're to one play, control. right? Comes exactly. down, we got to make the play. Exactly. Do you think, as we wrap this up here, is that an indictment on Shanahan for not having his players prepared for that moment of, of these new overtime rules? I, I, I think you've got to prepare for every situation. Again, the secret for all victory lie. Who organizes the non-obvious? 
wins the game. This was a game that really was about the non-obvious. And and Kansas City won the game. San Francisco didn't lose it, but Kansas City organized the non-obvious. Yeah, and it was Chris Jones, like you said. He said after the game, if they scored, we were going for two at the end of the game. We rehearsed it. So like that, that was always the goal for the Chiefs. They end up losing the toss, but they still get the chance to get the ball second because the Niners accept it. All right, we'll get more into this game on the other side. It's a GM Shuffle. You're listening to the GM Shuffle with Michael Lombardi, presented by DraftKings and VSIN. Here is Femi Abebefe. So the Kansas City Chiefs repeat as Super Bowl champions, first team to do it since the Patriots went 03 and 04, winning Super Bowls 38 and 39. I mean, it's difficult to do this. We knew that this Chiefs team all throughout the year, everyone said this is the worst version of the Reed Mahomes era, the toughest yeah. path for them. And and here they I, are once I again hoisting the Lombardi. I think it's the, the worst version offensively. Yeah. It, it, and, and look, it, to me, this proves the, the Walsh theory that, you know, you can win games – without having elite receivers. Mm -hmm. I mean, they trade Tyreek Hill, and they've won two Super Bowls after the trade. And it's crazy. Th this guy averages seven yards per attempt, but he's so good at the clutch plays, and he makes the right calls, and he does some things that he needs to do that they're able to overcome not having to pay Tyreek. Look, I'm sure they would love to have Tyreek on their team. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? But they couldn't afford to keep him and keep mm. all the other guys. And defensively, I think Brett Veach has done a great job of finding young talent on the team that they've surrounded this. But th this this conversation about this is the worst team is really wrong because the the def this was the best defensive team mm. they've ever had. So the formula for winning in the, anything in championship football is have really good offensive line, Really good defensive line and a blue chip quarterback. That's what the Chiefs had. I mean, their their offensive line, the tackles, they covered up for them by the scheme. The defensive line with Jones and all those guys, they played well. And you know, Snee gave them a great corner. I think McDuffie's been a hit for them at corner. And so, yeah, I I don't buy that rhetoric. I really don't. I I think to me, we're going to spend Femi. Let's see. Today is off season week number one. Mm -hmm. We will spend the next nauseating five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks about how you have to have a number one receiver on your team, how things fall apart when you don't. Meanwhile, the Chiefs have won two Super Bowls without Tyreek Hill. Like, I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to minimize the position. I'm not. However, if you don't have a great quarterback, it doesn't matter if you have Tyreek Hill or not. If you don't have these, a defense that can stop people, you're, you're not. I mean, Miami's got this great offense, right? Where are they? At home with us. Yeah. Watching the game. Tua's doing commercials. I saw Tua doing a commercial. God bless him. Uh, 70 plus days until the NFL draft. Get ready for that whole situation. That's, that's 69 and, and a half days of, you know, 17 receivers in the top 10 picks. You know, you got to have a receiver. Oh, my God. You can't draft one. I mean, you know. I got to get Marvin Harrison Jr. Oh, you, you know? got to have a receiver. Yeah. You got to have. I mean, you can't win without one, right? Meanwhile, Detroit's offense is potent. And they drafted Armand St. Brown in the fifth round, right? Yeah. I mean, like, come on. It, it, when does somebody look at how teams are built and say, okay, Debo's a, a second-round pick, right? Now, I know they paid Debo. Ayuk's a low first. Mm -hmm. Kittle's a fifth. Like, <clears throat> it, to me, it's just everybody just keeps talking around in circles. But, you know, they prove that they can win games other ways. Yeah, and I think the, the point, obviously, with the draft and to bring home, it's you can find a lot of these pass catchers outside of the first round. It's hard to find the big guys, the defensive linemen, the offensive linemen outside of the first round because yeah. those guys go early if they're really good. Well, I mean, I don't know if they'll put all the money into Chris Jones. The franchise tag's too rich. Mm -hmm. They're going to redo Mahomes' deal to buy some cap room. They've got a bunch of free agency. Look, the one thing about winning two years in a row in a cap era, what New England did in 03 and 04, this is historic because of the cap era. Because, you, but why are they, why is New England and why are the Chiefs able to do it? Because the best players on the team have competitive stamina. Yep. And they want to do it, right? And they want to do it. Now, you know, you watch Kelsey run and you see him. He may be hurt. I don't know. But when he comes back next year, is he going to be the same player? You got to answer that. You know, is he going to be the same player in December that he is in August? I don't know. And it has nothing to do with his social life, it has yeah. everything to do with 
father time. He's 34 years old. Yeah. He's, he's getting up there in age there. He's played a lot of football games. You mentioned competitive stamina. I wanted to share this stat with you because I think it's it's unbelievable what they've been able to do. Since 2019, this is from Evan Abrams over there at the Action Network. He said, since 2019, the Chiefs are now 5-1 and one when trailing by 10-plus points at any point in the playoffs. The rest of the NFL, 6-48 and 48 in yeah. that time span. Well, I mean, look, they have a great – I mean, Andy's a great offensive coach, right? And they have a lot of ways to move the football. And what they've been able to do with the offensive line, and, of course, they got – I mean, there were no holding calls yesterday. I mean, there was – on the one field goal drive – they tackled Hargrave. They didn't call it. Like, mm-hmm. I was scre- – even Millie was screaming. I'm like, oh, my God, that's holding so in there. They, did you see that play I'm talking about? You had to. But, I, I mean, look, credit them for doing it. I mean, they have – they can get to a lot of things. See, the difference between San Francisco's offense of what Kyle runs, which are all West Coast principles, Andy has a better drop-back pass game. Andy can get behind and catch up, right? Andy has better protections. Like, it's you don't see free runners coming at the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. You don't see them not being able to handle blitz zero. You know, you see them have an answer for pretty much all the, t- all the questions in the test. And when Kyle plays a certain way, he, that offense is running. But none of them, Houston, all the guys that take the offense from them, it, it's hard because they don't really have a pure drop back pass game. And I think a lot of people who listen, they say, well, well they also, they have Patrick Mahomes. That's why they're able to do this. What does this win mean for Mahomes. I mean, three Super Bowls in six years. The guy goes to minimum the AFC title game every single season. If, if you were to put an addendum in football done right, where are you ranking Mahomes on this list? Oh, he's in the top 20. He's in that certain, he's there. You know, I mean, there's no question. He, you know, I, and, and he, when I was writing the book, he didn't have the second one, Yeah. nor did he have the third. So he's in the top 20 players. Easy. Probably in the top 10. You know, I mean, the guy's incredible. And what he does when the game is on the line, you know, like we said on this podcast, and we said it on the show on Saturday, you and I, on Sunday with Stormy, he's Mariano Rivera. He's going to close the game out. You don't want him, whether he's down by 10 or up by three, you're not getting the ball back. He doesn't mm-hmm. miss any throws. Like, he's accurate with the ball. He can escape. When he has to run with it, he runs with it, you know, and they, they'll put him in play. So... He's quick-minded. You know, one time Frank Smouse, the former great scout for the Cincinnati Bengals, talked about this. He said, you know, everybody wants to talk about quarterbacks. Okay, Justin Fields is quick-footed, but he's not quick-minded. Okay, that's the difference, right? To be a great quarterback, you have to be quick-minded. And if you're quick-footed like he is, it's even better. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, look, it's they're they're not going away. Uh, I don't think they'll have fatigue in terms of winning fatigue. I don't believe that. I think that the competition in the AFC West is going to get harder with the style of play by the Chargers. I don't know about the Broncos Mm -hmm. because, you know, they're going to, you know, I, 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 Sean Payton was at radio media row the other day and he was talking about, uh, you know, we're we're having a decision fairly soon on Russell. What's the decision? Does Russell want to walk away from his guarantees or do you cut him? I mean, I think Russell would be stupid to walk away from his guarantees. Oh yeah. I mean, that's, that's a lot of money that he'd have uh, coming his way here. I think there's that decision, I think, was already made when, at the end of the regular season when they went to Jared Stidham. For Andy Reid, though, this is a third Super Bowl for a guy who I remember his years in Philadelphia. Everyone he talked about the, the big time, game. Couldn't win the big game. The, the same, timeout usage. The same all. narrative with Andy Reid that Kyle Shanahan has. Yeah. And so for, for Kyle, he's so young yeah, and talented that all he's got to really do is say, okay, how do I, what do I need to do to change? What, why are we. We're really good at what we do, what, and we can dominate teams. But what do we need to do to change? And I think if he's smart, he'll do those things. And I think he's really smart. And he's got a quarterback that he loves that has, they can't even redo his contract for two more years. So he's got a chance to keep things going with his salary cap. So, look, uh, Andy is – I mean, Andy's been able to do – you know, Andy's decision – on who to hire for the defensive staff has been proven to be really good. He brought Spagnola back, who was successful mm-hmm. with them. You know, Brendan Daly, nobody talks about this guy. This guy's been in Super Bowls for the he, – he left New England after the last Super Bowl against the Rams, and he's been in nothing but Super Bowls since. You got Joe Cullen coaching the defensive line. I mean, th- they've done a great job defensively of not only scheming the game and strategy, but of developing the young players on their team. 
Yeah, no, it's been a really, really remarkable job what the Kansas City Chiefs have been doing. And like you said, they're not going anywhere. Mahomes what is 28 years old. What was Kelsey doing yelling at Reed? Do you have any I, idea? I don't know. I was going to ask you about that. I like, don't know either. Like, I mean, was she? I, I think he was mad he wasn't in the game, would be my guess. Just no, I think he was mad he wasn't getting the ball. You think that was more so? Yeah, he was wide open on the deep throw that, that they mm-hmm. caught, you know? I mean, he's like screaming he's wide open, and then the kid made the catch uh, down the field. But I don't know what he was. I mean, he played emotional. You know, He's I'm an emotional not, guy. I mean, Andy can roll with the. That's the thing about Andy that I think is different than a lot of guys is, Andy will take guys with with character issues. Look, Kelsey wasn't Kelsey wasn't a clean player coming out of Cincinnati. He was not. Chris Jones wasn't a clean player coming out of coming out of uh, Mississippi State. Mm-hmm. And when I say clean in terms of people had some issues with their character, and then you know, of course, Tyree Kill was he was off of 99.9 percent of the draft boards and they mm-hmm. were able to grab him in there so but andy's been able to manage all those personalities without the place erupting chiefs were confident i mean that nobody's saying that they're going to get back for sure next year i mean three super bowls in a row that's no, it's never been done so if they, if they do that i mean my goodness what a what a tip of the cap that would be the niners confident that they'll get back here I next am. year i think to me if kyle didn't take a week off you know take a breath I mean, they got nothing out of the O2 draft, so they got to start to draft better, right? They're mm-hmm. going to have to have the Brett. Brett Veach, the reason they're here is because Veach has done a really good job of finding some of these young players that they're playing with on the field, especially when you look at the deep. When you look at the, 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 the Kansas City defense, how many young players they have there, you know, are they stars? No. I mean, they're going to have to replace Chris Jones. That's a blue chip defensive tackle. But I, I think that's where they're going to have to draft a little bit better. They're going to have to be able to kind of fill some of these holes with young players. And they're going to have to develop those young players. I think that's critical. They have to be really, at the end of the day, for all the money that they put in the defensive line, they have to feel like, God damn it, we just didn't get what we needed out of that. Yeah. Some of the free agents that they have. I mean, Javon Kinlaw, he'll be a free agent. We'll see what they do with him there. I don't. I mean, kind of just let him test that. I mean, Chase Young was trying hard to make money yesterday. Everybody was talking about how great he was playing. But then I didn't see him for three quarters. Did you? It was a nice little move on the sack there. I was like, okay. I mean, he got one people. sack, and it was like, okay, now somebody pay me $25 million a year, please. <laughs> Bosa was awesome in the game. I, I mean, mean he Bosa's was, relentless. Bosa's, yeah, he's ridiculously good. <laughs> Bosa's relentless. But I, I mean, look, Kyle is a quarterback. Kyle's got a good offense, regular season. If he's got to just fix a couple of these things, like Andy Reid had to fix, like this whole idea that Kyle's not a big game coach, I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. It really is. Mm-hmm. They got to find an answer for blitz zero in pressure moments. They've got to find a way to handle the strategy and the tactics better. There's no question about that. But you know, there we always say, coach, we got to get better. We got to get better player. We got to get better talent. We got to get better talent. Well, sometimes the coaches have to get better too. Yeah, and, and Kyle, like you said, he has a lot of time to get better. He's still a young coach. Yeah, and I'm sure he'll get back here a number of times based on the track record that he's shown so far. I did think that the line of the night, though, was from Mahomes at the podium when he said, the Kansas City Chiefs are never underdogs. No. He said they're never underdogs. Three straight times in the betting market they were underdogs. That whole idea that he, oh, Mahomes has to play on the road. Remember we talked about that till not <laughs> Like, seriously, how is that even He never story? played a road playoff game. How, how is that a story, you know? <laughs> They go into Buffalo, it's they like win. It's like saying, oh, is Brock Purdy good? I mean, <laughs> what? We'll ask that question all offseason, even though we all have the evidence that he's a good player. All right, we'll get into some other miscellaneous notes in our degree heart racing moment next. You're listening to the GM Shuffle with Michael Lombardi, presented by DraftKings and v Here is Femi Abebefe. We already have odds for next year's Super Bowl. We'll get into that. We have odds for next year's regular season MVP. We can already spin it forward to the 2024 season, but before we get we into all of to. that. So we have to. I'm not talking to. about Ken we Palm. Have to. I'm not talking about Ken Palm. <laughs> You'll be all involved in Ken shout, Palm. Shout out to our college basketball listeners out yeah. there. Uh, before you get into that, let's do our bear heart racing moment. Did you know that heart disease risk factors such as diabetes or high blood pressure can increase your chance of a heart attack by up to two times? Learn more and assess your heart risk risk factors at checkyourheartrisk.com brought to you by Bear Aspirin, the official sponsor of Fans Hearts. Michael, what was your heart racing moment from the game yesterday? You know, I think there's always a time and I keep, you know, every drive I write down the series and 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 go through that. Every drive there is this is the play of the game. This is this is going to determine the game. The third and five before Moody's field goal, I knew that was going to determine the game. I knew that if if they didn't get that 
that Kansas City could could win the game in the last because they had two timeouts and they could mm-hmm. have won the game or they were going to send the game into overtime. And I thought the other heart racing moment was in the red zone when Kyle had the third and four again and they didn't convert. To me, those are pl- like if we convert this, we win the game. If we convert this, we win. And that's the heart racing moment, you know, and, and before even Bear started advertising with us, I always yeah. take a bear every day because I need a heart racing moment every day. Seriously. <laughs> there you go. I'm old. Hey, you know what? We're, we want to be here for a long time as well as a good time as well. So make sure you check your heart For me, mine was it was the third and one scrambled final drive of the game for Mahomes in overtime. Uh, I felt that if the Niners were able to get some pressure and sack him, maybe it's the Butker field goal and Shanahan strategy of wanting the third possession in overtime when the game then becomes sudden death that would have played out into his hand but when Mahomes is able to scramble get inside the 15 yard line right there I thought he might have scored a touchdown on that yeah. play but that was able to get them into first down and a few plays later they ultimately win the game to McCole Hardman with the touchdown there after what we saw in Buffalo a few weeks ago McCole Hardman the game winning Super Bowl yeah. reception well I had you know they had it they, they had they, they Tony they were never going to activate Tony what what day did they cut Tony this offseason tomorrow I mean when do they let him go I mean <laughs> Well, maybe See, there's some guy the saying he can't manage. You know, there's a guy that, you know, and of course he thinks he's the number one receiver and he's standing there watching the Super Bowl with me. <laughs> You know, it's unbelievable, right? It, it truly is unbelievable. I guess I guess he's supposed to say he's good, but it's like, man, what's going on there? Uh, we didn't mention this earlier. Just something that watching the game, I felt awful for Dre Greenlaw for popping the Achilles there. Yeah. Trying to like that's just brutal, man. It's it's gonna be a long road to recovery for Dre Greenlaw. That's. That's a tough one to have in the Super Bowl. And how would you grade? How did you grade Romo's performance? They said Sean McManus was on, and farewell to Sean McManus. He's been mm-hmm. running CBS Sports going back to when the NFL came back in 1998. So great. How did you grade Romo's performance? So this is on the on the Romo scale, which is which is a lower. No, scale. no, this is on like we're at the Super Bowl scale. Super Bowl you got to bring your A game here. I, I, I would say that he was a D plus. Yeah, I would say. I mean, I just to me. I mean, to be uh, think about this. To put, let's put it in this context. He's probably the second highest paid person at the game. Maybe Reed makes more than eighteen million a mm-hmm. year. Maybe he should. Mahomes makes more. Yeah. No, no, I'm talking about the coaches. Oh, the coaches. Uh, the, okay, gotcha. the entertainers should make definitely more than him. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the coaches. Yeah. I mean, think about it. If you're Kyle Shanahan and Tony Romo's making more than you, like there's something wrong with that picture, right? And then you listen to it. It's like, how about when, I mean, Nance did a great job of covering up for him. Like there was one time where Nance, where he wanted to go for it on fourth down, and like in the early in the game. And Nance is like, why would you do that? You know, it's like, all right. So what was your best commercial? Best commercial. I don't know if I had a best commercial. I had a one that I did not like the, the Timu commercials that ran like six times during the game. They must have a ton of money. I, I'm telling I mean, you. Why would I go to a Chinese Amazon? I got Amazon okay. here. Do I got to buy ch- stuff from China? I mean, it just shows you how, how like, like we, like, shouldn't we not buy, shouldn't we buy things here in this country as opposed to like, that was my reaction. Like, why do I want to support hey, the China government, the China economy? T- Timu pointed up the money. If you pony up the money, you'll oh, get yeah, out, you'll get out in there. Uh, our producer Elliot was telling me, but I had no, I had never even heard of Timu before. I've never heard of it either. I'm not going to, I'm so, never going to hear it again either. <laughs> Apparently what they do, it's like, everything is just ridiculously cheap, even cheaper than Amazon and all that stuff. So maybe that's the appeal but how, to it. How do they but, ship it to you? I mean, was you're on some boat coming over here or what? <laughs> I don't know how it gets. You have to avoid the whole, you know, the, the Somalia coast or something that it gets into the country. I don't have any idea. I'm not sure what happens with I, this I team. I thought the but... Dunkin' Donuts one with Brady and Matt Damon. You know what I would have liked on that one? I would have liked Kimmel to come in mm. and, like, give Damon some, give him a hard time. It would have been good on that one. Yeah, no, the, the commercial's always a hit every single year. Any halftime show thoughts? Big Usher fan? I liked that. I loved Alicia Keys. I thought she was, she was great. phenomenal. I loved that. I loved that. She was great. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was good. Really entertaining halftime show. It was entertaining. Show. I mean, there always are, aren't they? Yeah, it has to be. They yeah. have to be. So I, I was fine with it. Yeah. I was fine with it. It'll be interesting to see how this goes forward in the landscape. Who's going to be next year? We're in New Orleans next year. New Orleans is next year. That's going to be a next party. next year, how about this, Femi? I was almost staggered by this. And you probably support it because you're probably running to this window right now. And I leave. You're going to wait for to see me leave, and then you're running to the window to put your Fields MVP ticket you're not in. Leave, you're doing Lombardi line after this, so you'll be hanging Yeah, but you're going to make sure my head's turned so I don't see you go to the book. <laughs> wait while you're doing the show. <laughs> how, are the, how are the Bears 30-1 to 1 to get to the Super Bowl and the Rams 35-1? to 1? Not to get to the Super Bowl, to win the Super Bowl. To win the Super 30 Bowl. 30-1. to 1. How is this possible? I, I don't get it. I, I mean, like, okay, I get – how about the Eagles 20-1? to 1? 
I mean, you think mm -hmm. what team has not taken a bigger fall than the Eagles, right? Yeah. Here they were at this game last year. They got a bright young quarterback. They've mm -hmm. got all these skilled players, the Talented. best offensive line. Now they're 20 to 1. Wow. Nobody was playing. Nobody was talking about that during the season. Everybody was nope. in there 10 and 1. I mean, Wawa's going to be depressed. It's going to be so depressed in Wawa. It's going to be bad. Is, is there a team that you think is mispriced right now? Because the favorite is the 49ers. They're plus 550. Chiefs plus 650. Baltimore's 9 to 1. Buffalo 10 to 1. Detroit 12 to 1. Shout out to Detroit. I think you uh, got to go through. Here's what I think you have to do. I think you have to go through the this list and then put the staffs together, right? I think you got to sit there and say, are the Dolphins better with Anthony Weaver defensively? and Joe Barry than they were with Vic Fangio. How does that relate? Like, who is the best offseason defensive coordinator or offensive mm -hmm. coordinator hire? Can the Browns overcome – they're 35-1. to 1. Can they overcome uh, the loss of Bill Callahan as a line coach? Yeah. He's really good. The Falcons are 35-1. to 1. I'm sure there's a lot of confidence in that front office to get things straight. I have no doubt about that. You know, and, you know, the Broncos are 100-1. to 1. The Titans are 150. The Panthers are 250. Wow. Yeah. I mean, the commanders at 100 to 1, that's going to be interesting to see how they, how they take this thing moving forward. Because one of the things I think is you're going to have to change the culture within that building and move mm -hmm. it into more being more demanding. And Dan Quinn's going to have to do that. What about uh, Big Daddy's Packers at 20 to 1? You know, I, I don't know Jeff Halfley that well. I know mm -hmm. he's highly thought of from the people that I respect. So I think that certainly would be a really good. I would have hired Martindale there. Martindale went to Michigan. Yeah. I mean, that was a pretty – that's a good hire by Moore for him to go to Michigan. Uh, I, I, I think, to me, that one's interesting. Like, if I were the Dolphins, I probably would have – I don't know, Anthony Weaver's never really called the back end. So, Joe Barry, they had to hire Joe Barry to kind of formulate the back end. I think the Bengals at 13-1, to 1, right? Don't mm -hmm. you see – well, now, they've got a bunch of free agents. So T. You Higgins, be careful. chief among them. Uh, uh, you know, and Tyler Boyd, too, I believe, yeah. too. He's one. So, uh, they have to do something there. How about the Jets only being 25-1? to 1? Well, that's the power of Sala. Run it back, baby. When, when you have an elite coach like that, you would have to you would have to have them at twenty five. History of winning a lot How of How is that games. even possible that they're twenty five that they're this the Jets and the Texans it's, are not the same team? It's Rogers respect. That's all it is. These numbers are screwed up, man. Thirty to one for the Bears. My, we don't and and they're gonna have Caleb Williams at quarterback. That's the thing is so like my advice to anybody out there, like when you're looking at these markets. I would be more so in the process of elimination stage right now, more so than like looking to bet on teams. Like Chicago, 30 to 1, they're going to have a rookie quarterback. I just crossed them off the list. Like any team with a rookie quarterback immediately well, gets crossed. Well, you can't say that because, I mean, look, you, you know, now this is to, to win the Super Bowl. I get yep. that. Okay. So you could say that. But I'm talking about if making the playoffs. Oh, they can make playoffs. Yeah, they could make the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, with a rookie quarterback at the Bears, they certainly could yeah, make Yeah, they the can playoffs. make it. We've seen plenty of rookie quarterbacks make it, but just to win, that's a whole nother step. I mean, there. how are the Rams 35 to 1 with Stafford and McVay? You know, they, got, they kept Shula, who runs the Raheem Morris scheme defensively. Mm -hmm. Like how are they? How are they worse than the J the Jags? Here's the question I want to ask you: All these shows that we're sitting in the studio looking at up here is Purdy any good? Is Purdy any good? If Trevor Lawrence played as good as Purdy, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Be ready to give him three hundred million dollars. That's what they. And be they don't want to give him money. I mean, I think they're concerned. They are. Uh, real quick, let's go through our awards here for the game. There, the Fred Palermo best game plan of the week. I mean, Spags. Was I thought he was great on third down. Yeah. I think that if Kyle goes back and watches it, the third down. Well, to me, third down's a byproduct of, of second down. Like you had mm -hmm. a. I said all week long that I thought the second down call sheet had to be really good, and you know, and I think that Spags did a great job on second down to get him into third and long because he knew he gained the advantage in third and long. Again, strategy and tactics, right? The strategy is to get him into third and long. How, the tactics are how do we do that and we be aggressive on second down. St Spags was more aggressive on second down than the 49ers were. Mm. On the lamb. Oh. <sighs> So you know, who did I have in the lamp? Yeah, the, nine, the Niners need a larger oh, uh, blitz zero. I, yeah, package. I think the, the, the Niners passing game needs to have an expansion on blitz zero. I think there's mm -hmm. no question about that. And, you know, I, I think to me, you, you've got to be able to, to – you know you're going to get not, – not, you know, when I say that, you say, well, they, get, they face blitz zero every week. But it's blitz zero against a really good strategist and tactician. It's mm -hmm. not blitz zero against somebody who's not very good at it. You know uh, – I think what we do know about Super Bowls now, mm -hmm. the defensive lines and the scoring in the fourth quarter will always be there because the defensive fronts get tired. Yep. 
And then it is what it is. We talked about it throughout the pod. Mahomes. He's from Mariana Rivera. I mean, you know, look, the guy closes, either wins it, you know, but the, the longer the innings go, he's going to win the game. That's why that third and four call was so important because he mm-hmm. wasn't going to get the ball back. That's the mm-hmm. call that you're sitting there saying, God dang it. But let's say we always focus on the third and five call. You know, Brock Purdy got the ball tipped by McDuffie. It was the second down call that killed him. Yeah. Like Teddy KGB said, the kids got alligator blood. Uh, Patrick Mahomes here. Uh, real quick before we get out of here, we will not have a podcast on Thursday, uh, end of the season. We're going to take a little bit of a break here, but we will be back next Monday. We're yeah. ramped up for the, uh, the the 2024 off season, yeah, and we, we start to, we start we start talking about personnel. When's your changes. bachelor party? You're going to miss some. Uh, that's uh, in a couple weeks. So, so you're yeah, yeah we have to get we have to get yeah. a substitute in here. We'll, we'll do a substitute uh, podcast here, but uh, yeah, I'll be uh, I'm getting married in uh, in less than two months now. So yeah, we're gonna need a pot. You're not gonna be doing the pot on your honeymoon. I can tell you that. I'll, I'll there'll be an annulment if I did. <laughs> I, I think I'd be, I'd be uh, on the lamb. Yeah, you'd definitely be on the lamb. Be on the lamb. So we'll, we'll get into all of that scheduling as we come forward here. But yeah, obviously an exciting time for me looking ahead to uh, a couple of weeks, uh, not a couple months from now, getting married. But it was a fun 2023 great season. season. Thank Kansas you, Femi, Chiefs. for everything. You did a great well, job. You this as season. you as well. Congratulations. Now get over there the and Chiefs. bet that field ticket. Go ahead. You won't find me doing that. I'm crossing them off the list. Thank you to our producer, Elliot Bowman. Subscribe, rate, and review as always. We'll see you guys next Monday.